Welcome to the Four Bears Casino in Newtown, North Dakota for Friday Night Fights on ESPN. Brackets are on everyone's mind in late March, and it's no different here on Friday Night Fights. Tonight, the lightweight semifinals for our Boxino Tournament. And just like that other bracket, there's no shortage of drama and upsets. Boxino 2014. There's that uppercut, Teddy. Yeah. Put two of them together. Mendoza fills that space with a left hand and a right uppercut. Down to the wire. Who wants it more? Zombie. Oh, and he caught him going back and run. He sends back Amadou. A draw after six rounds. Tournament style, we go to a single draw breaker. That right hand landing by Petrov is hurting Papazov here. The undefeated Papazov might not be undefeated much longer. Petrov. Body shot Dude. scored a knockdown. Oh, and he caught him again. Nikwe does not look good at all. Body. He could finish him here. He's going to get rid of him. TKO victory. Parkamo. What a statement to finish off the quarterfinals of Boxino. in North Dakota. You better believe it. It's the Four Bears Event Center and Casino Friday Night Fights brought to you by Corona Extra. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're down to our final four as we take a look at tonight's Boxino Tournament Bracket brought to you by 1800 Tequila. Tonight's fight scheduled to go eight rounds. However, if the fight is tied after eight rounds, we go to a draw breaker, a ninth and deciding round our championship will be May the 23rd. Hello, my name is Todd Grisham. In two weeks, it'll be our middleweight version of the Boxino semifinals, but tonight, it's all about the lightweights as we welcome in my partner, Teddy Atlas. And Teddy, just like the NCAA tournament has its bracket buster, we've got our own bracket buster, and his name's Chris Rudd. Yeah, Chris Rudd, he plays for the Dayton Flyers. No, he don't, he just boxes. But the Dayton Flyers remind me of Chris Rudd. The Dayton Flyers came into the NCAA tournament that you just talked about. They came in their number 11 seed. Now they are in the elite four, one step away from the final four. And one step away is Mr. Rudd from the finals. And right now, if you ask him if he felt like an underdog, no. If you ask the Dayton Flyers, their coach and their players, do they feel like an 11th seed? No. The magic of a tournament, whether it's the NCAA or whether it's Boxino, the magic is you can start off as a big underdog, as a low seed, and then all of a sudden you transform. There's a transformation. You grow. You believe. I feel like Dickie Vitale right now you can win baby and right now run is feeling just like that he doesn't think that he's a low seed he thinks he's a top seed and that makes all the difference in the world Chris Rudd will be in our second semifinal tonight but first up it's Miguel Gonzalez and Fernando Carcamo what are your quick thoughts on that fight you know Carcamo the youngest guy left in this tournament and again when you're young and you're in this tournament, you can start to find yourself. And when you have power, like Harkamo has, and he has the most power left in this tournament, in his left hand, they're both southpaws. Gonzalez is more fire-tested. You know, he's been in with the better guys, more experienced, but that power of Harkamo, and again, being young, only 23, starting to find himself, can be very interesting. You're not going to sing Lime in the Carcamo, are you? No, Thank not God. at all, but sit back, enjoy, and check your brackets and see if you got the right guy going to the finals. The third member of our broadcast team, Bernardo Asuna, caught up with Fernando Carcamo just moments ago. Fernando, in the first round of the Boxino tournament, you knocked out Samuel Nikwe. Different style against Miguel Gonzalez. How do you win this fight? Yeah, it, it will be a different fight. It's a different fighter. Uh, last time, Nikwe. I was waiting for him because he was throwing, he was throwing some power. So I was waiting for him. I was waiting for the opening. This time I'm gonna create the opening. I'm gonna put the pressure on him, and we're gonna win this. Last time around it was Joel Diaz in your corner. This time it's his brother Antonio Diaz because of his commitment with Timothy Bradley. What difference does that make? Yeah, it was very close to his fight with Pacquiao, so he 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 wasn't able to to come for uh, for multiple days. So uh, it's the same thing, you know, Joel and Antonio, they both work with me. They, 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 they did the, the training together. 
they, they put the strategy together and I was training meets with Tonyo. So we are really, we have a very good relationship uh, and, and it's no difference. We've got the knockout power of Fernando Carcamo against the slick boxing of Miguel Gonzalez here in the Boxino semifinals. Slick boxing is right. In fact, they call Miguel Gonzalez silky smooth. Let's reintroduce you to him right now. Slick, smooth, you know what I mean? And, and, and hey, like I say, the name was given silky smooth. It ain't self-claimed, so, you know, they call me that for a reason. And that's been, you know, since I was a young teen growing up, reality to me is the motivation to what I do in life. As a man, as a fighter, you know, as a father, um, as a son, if I could put it in one word, it, it'd be that, you know, that, that strives to make me be a better person than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I am today. I want to make a, a living for myself and my family, man, and, and this, is, this is what I know how to do. This is what I love to do. I have the skill and the talent to, to be successful in this sport, and I'm just out to prove myself to the world. And um, I got a lot of fans and, and family who strongly believes in me. And um, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't want to let anyone down. Well, I believe I bring excitement to the ring, um, and, and I'm a fighter. I bring that dog with me every fight I bring that heart you know what I mean and um, if I can knock you out best believe I'm going in there to take you out I ain't going to pity pat with you play patty cakes or none of that you know I'm, I'm in there strictly business I got numerous styles man I can box I can bang I'm slick powerful and uh, I come to knock you out I want to be a legend and to do that I have to do um, you know win fights uh, every fight that that's in front of me and um, this tournament I believe is going to be a great um, asset to my, my boxing career. If I win this tournament, it's going to mean a lot to me. Um, it's a great accomplishment for me and my team, and um, this is what we do it for. And we just want to, um, you know, get that, that shot at the title, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to, and I believe that this tournament here will put me where I need to be. The pressure is just um, going back to reality, man. I just want to, I just, I feel like, it's due now, you know what I mean? I worked so hard. That, that's what the pressure boils down to. I want to become champion of the world. Coming up next, it's on the first of our two semifinals, Fernando Carcamo and Miguel Gonzalez, live on Friday Night Fights. ESPN Friday Night Fights is presented by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. And in part by Nationwide Insurance, Nationwide is on your side. We are in Newtown, North Dakota. As you can imagine, it's all about black gold, Texas tea. This is oil country. And get ready, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first semifinal from the lightweight division of Boxino 2014. Let's look at the tail of the tape. And the one stat that jumps out here is the height advantage, four inch advantage for Carcamo. But look at the reach. Miguel Gonzalez actually has an inch and a half reach advantage. And there is Fernando Carcamo the big hitter a 16 and 5 record but he's won six consecutive fights and they've all been by way of knockout and his opponent out of cleveland ohio he's very proud to be from cleveland it's miguel gonzalez the 28 year old 23 and 3 16 knockouts he's got a fantastic amateur career look at some of those wins you recognize those names like victor ortiz and terrence crawford and now it's time to look like a champ let's see what the fighters need to do brought to you by just for men well they're both southpaws should be interesting let's start with the southpaw gonzalez press behind the jab lands a straight left and for Cargamo, Keep him at the end of your jab, and then land the big left hand. You have a little extra power in that left hand. Fernando Carcamo with the only knockout in the first round from the lightweight division. An impressive performance as he beat Samuel Nikwe in the quarterfinals. Could be some fireworks here. Good evening, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we went over the rules earlier today. All right, gentlemen, today I'm just going to ask you for tonight just straight punches. Keep them up, keep them clean. 
and obey commands at all times. All right? Um, this is good right here. This is good right here, gentlemen. Let's touch them up and let's get it on, gentlemen. Bad news. I don't know if it's going to turn out bad, but it could be. For Cargo Motard, he's been knocked out by his southpaw. And that's exactly what Gonzalez is, a silky smooth southpaw. In fact, a fantastic amateur career, a U.S. Olympic alternate. He's been a pro for five years. 23 wins, only three losses. So here we go, the first semifinal of Boxino 2014. Gonzalez, split personality. I'm not saying he's civil, but he's two different guys. One presses and one is very defensive when he boxes. Which will be here tonight? Which does he have to be tonight, Gonzalez? To me, that's interesting. Right now, he looks like he wants to be the guy pressing. Miguel Gonzalez, no more as a boxer, but he's pushing the tempo right now, throwing some big shots right away on the slugger, Carcamo. Well, he knows Carcamo has been knocked out before, as I just said. He also knows that Carcamo, at least he should know, his people should know, that Carcamo has been on the floor in two other fights. So you wonder about the chin of Carcamo. That's why I think maybe the other Gonzalez. Oh, what a so big left hand! Oh, Hold on a second! One, two, Miguel Gonzalez three, being given a count right now. The referee has not stopped six, it. Seven, eight, okay? See, this could Did be a problem for Cogamo. He thought it was over. Mentally, is he's still in this fight now. He was just up on a rope celebrating, thinking the fight's over. Tough to change that mental, psychological gear. I know it sounds funny to the people at home, but you shut down a little bit. You think it's over with. It's not over with. Gonzalez watch said in our gentlemen. fighter interviews yesterday, the one thing he had to watch stop, out stop. for was Karkovo's left hand, and he just right, got stop, a mouthful of it, and I'm surprised he's still standing. Gonzalez has come off the floor to win before. He's going to have to do that again tonight. First things first, he's got to survive this round. Things were going so well for Gonzalez, but he got up against the ropes, sort of like he did in his first fight when he beat Miguel Mendoza. Up, Said he did that because he wanted to entertain the crowd. Well, they were certainly entertained by that left hand he just ate. See, now you're seeing the Gonzalez that's aggressive. And the reason for it, a lot of people might think, well, he's just been hurt, Teddy. Why wouldn't he be away from the guy that hurt him? Because when you're in close, you can control what the guy can do. You can smother that power. You can physically move him around a little bit. Keep him from having range, distance to unleash that stop, power. Stop. That's exactly what's in the mind. Go, and right go. now in the body of Gonzalez, smother the power of Kogamo. So it looks like, at least for now, Gonzalez nope, nope. has now. found his feet again and is trying to push the tempo here to Kogamo. But as we saw, one punch could change everything from the Mexican fighter. You know, Kakamo hasn't been really scintillating since that knockdown, Todd. I'm going to tell you as a trainer, it's because he psychologically switched gears. He was celebrating before it was over. Mickey Ward thought he'd beaten Arturo Gotti one time, said that stop, cost stop. him. He lost his focus, stop, and it appeared to be the same situation for Kakamo here in round one. That's a very good point. And that is a precedent for what we're talking Look at what happened here. Kagamo with the left hook. Now, we set the powers in the left hand, but usually we're looking for the power in the straight left hand. He turned off the docks. He switched over, and Gonzalez was not ready for that punch to come. He pulled back, and the left hook caught him, pulling back. Again, a left hook, he stepped in with the left hook. A left hook, the thing about a left hook, it can find you when you move away. It found Gonzalez moving away with his hands down. And again, Gonzalez, Cogamo usually throwing that left hand from the southpaw position, that time from the orthodox. There he is celebrating, thinking it's over. All of a sudden, oops, oh, it's still on? Oh, wow, I better get back to it. Well, it looked like Gonzalez's soul temporarily left his body for about three seconds, but he found himself somehow, and you saw the knee technically did not touch the canvas. The referee ruling that the ropes held Gonzalez up. It is ruled a knockdown and a strong showing in the first round for Carcamo. Look, we've talked about some of the advantages of Gonzalez. More experienced, you know, he's been battle-tested. He's fought a little bit of the better opposition. 
We talked about Kagamo having the power in the left hand, having that advantage. We talked about Gonzalez can press you. He can also defensively play with you, box you. But one of the big advantages, really, that scored that knockdown and got Kagamo off to this great start, Todd, is the ability to switch. He switched from southpaw over to orthodox. That versatility really set up that left hook that landed. Because one minute he's southpaw, the next minute he's orthodox. Gonzalez did not expect that left hand. You talked about it early. Got to look out for that left hand. But he was going into the fight looking out for the left hand from a southpaw position, not from the left hook position, from an orthodox position. So Gonzalez, you can at least say this, he took Carcamo's best punch, and he's still fighting in round two. How? I'm not quite sure. Well, he's been on the floor before, so he has the heart. He has the mentality of a fighter. He has the ability, and he knows he has the ability. Very important, Todd. He knows that he can come off the floor and come back and perform and win a fight. He's done it before. Very important for a fighter to know that going in. Knows he can depend on himself. And again, knows he can smother the power of Kagamo. All he knows is there was distance when he got hit by Kagamo. So what's he doing now, Todd? Making sure there's no distance. Staying close. Kagamo told us his game plan was, quote, attack, 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 and destroy. And he nearly did it already. But again, Gonzalez hanging around. He is the better boxer. Told us he didn't care if he won by knockout or decision. Karkamo was leaning more towards, I want to win this thing by knockout, and he may have to win this by knockout. Well, listen, see what you just said? You said that Gonzalez, the better boxer. Now, a lot of people might argue with you. A lot of people might say, but look, he's like Roberto Duran now. He's the guy who's in the trenches. He's the guy who's got his head in the chest of Karkamo. But I would argue you're correct because he's boxing, he's aggressively boxing, but he's still taking care of defense. He's in there moving his head on the side, he's not taking punches, he's delivering punches, he's blocking punches, he's picking a spot for punches. He's a boxer right now, Gonzalez, only an aggressive boxer. Make sure you score the fight tonight on our Facebook page. Go to Friday Night Fights Facebook. You can judge this round. I'm sure you gave the first one to Carcamo. Who do you give round two to? I said 2-2. Two -two. Look for little tricks in there by Gonzalez. Maybe a little dirty tricks. He holds behind the head, and then he pulls you down and hits you with the left hand. Let's send it now to our Friday Night Fight studio. Doug Kazarian filling in for me. <laughs> well done, Todd. Teddy, appreciate it. Yeah, it looked like the fight was going to end about a minute into the fight. Welcome into your Bristol studios. I'm Doug Kazarian. We'll get you back out to North Dakota momentarily. Coming up tonight on Friday Night Fights, We'll take a look around the world of boxing, including how Adonis Stevenson's exodus to Showtime will affect his boxing future. We'll also be joined in studio by middleweight titleist Kid Chocolate Peter Quillen, discussing everything from being undefeated to how he broke someone's jaw with a move Freddie Roach taught him. We'd like you to be a part of the show. Reach out to me on Twitter, at Doug ESPN, as well as former longtime Ring Magazine editor Nigel Collins. We'll do our best to tweet back at you. We'll also encourage you to score tonight's fights from your home. Just log on to Friday Night Fights Facebook page and use the scoring app. All that and much more coming up tonight on Friday Night Fights. Let's send it back out to Todd Grisham and the legendary Teddy Atlas in North Dakota. I love that guy. You he know, knows, that guy, that he knows guy, how to rub I'm you the right you. way, doesn't he? No, I'm telling you, I love that guy. <laughs> I mean, I, you're really good there, but I don't mind him in the studio every once in a while, as long as you're, okay. as long as you're over here near me. I understand. We're going to go out karaoke tonight, me and you. He can work the studio anytime my man Todd is over here, though. We have to have Todd in the equation, kind of like having a lime in the you-know-what. Here we go, round three between Carcamo and Gonzalez. What were your initial thoughts on round two for Gonzalez, who was nearly out on his feet in the first round? I think his instinct took over. I think his intellect took over. His experience took over. Again, like I said before, he recognized why he got hit. He got hit because there was a gap. There was distance. So what did he do? He closed the gap. He got close. He wasn't safe outside, so he went inside where he felt safer. When there's rain, when there's storm, when there's wind, what do you do? You go outside? No, you go inside. No. He went inside to get out of the rain. Seeking shelter from that left hand of Carcamo. It beat Samuel Nikwe in our quarterfinal and nearly beat Miguel Gonzalez here in the semis. 
Look for some body work. Both guys inside, what do you look for? You look for some body work. I'm gonna look for it from Gonzalez. Not saying it shouldn't come from Kogamo, but I'm thinking that if Gonzalez has this mentality to wear them down, stay close, smother them, the mentality will be to go to the body too. Major League Baseball's opening night is headed your way, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, Sunday on ESPN. It's the Dodgers and the Padres. You can watch it live body shot. on Watch ESPN. Todd, watch these body shots. Kogamo's the one who got it off that time. Ooh. And again, good bite. You're going to be in close. Well, guess what? You might as well attack that body. Kogamo said it was the body shots that helped him win his first fight in Boxino. He's going back to that well again here in round three. Well, why not? You have power. Doesn't matter. Use the power body and head. But watch that right hand. I want you to watch. I want you guys to watch where a little sneaky in there. Gonzalez using the experience. He knows where the ref is. The ref's over on his left side. So he uses his right hand sometimes to go behind the head of Kogamo, pull him forward, and hit him with the left uppercut. He did it a moment ago. Look for him to do it again when the referee's not in position. Kakamo just missing with another left work, hook. Gentlemen. Stop, stop. Gonzalez working inside. It's what you said he needed to do to avoid the storm. You know, Gonzalez feels like he's comfortable inside also for another re reason. He's a bigger man. Half his career at lightweight and half at junior welterweight. Well, Kakamo, his entire career, Todd, has been at lightweight, but I don't know if I believe in doing it just because you're the bigger guy. I believe in who's the power guy. And the power guy is Kogamo, whether it's inside or outside. Okay, but anyway. Listen, if you got a guy laying on you, you don't want him to lay on you, what do you do? Do that. Bang him to the body. That will convince him. Bang him again to the body. That will convince him not to lay on the inside. Left uppercut, then right hook to the body. Big, powerful shots. You got the power. We talked about it from the opening, Todd. kogamo has got the power. Whether you use it downstairs or upstairs, it's effective. You're watching our first semifinal here in the lightweight division of our Boxino 2014 tournament. Still to come later tonight, Peter Petroff and Chris Rudd in our other semifinal. The winners meet May the 23rd in our championship fight. I hope the judges were watching those body shots because a lot of times judges don't really give. There's that pull you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. The right hand behind the head of Kogamo pulled him forward and then hit him with the left uppercut. A lot of times judges don't look for those body shots and really score them the way they should score them. To me, Kogamo won that round based on those body shots. Miguel Gonzalez, not quite a crafty veteran, 28 years old, had that extensive amateur career has 26 professional fights as for Karkamo not much amateur experience at all maybe that's why he started 10 and 5 in his professional career but he's won six straight fights all by knockout and he nearly put out Gonzalez in round one here tonight now that's a good point 150 amateur fights for Gonzalez only 14 for Karkamo but you know what power is like a teacher having that eraser remember those black erasers I used to have them thrown at me and right now Kogamo's using that eraser to erase the experience, the average experience of Gonzalez. Kogamo again going to the body. You can hear those shots resonating throughout the arena here in Newtown, North Dakota. There's a look at Teddy's card. He's got Kogamo up 29-27. And now from 1800 Tequila, they sponsor our Facebook viewer scorecard. Make sure you're voting on our Facebook page. And you, the fans at home, 100% to zero, round one to Karkamo. I was gonna get worried about everyone if that wasn't the case. And now a nice combination there from Karkamo goes downstairs, then back up. Look, when you're laying in front, both guys are laying in front, opportunities for the body. Right now, Karkamo, the one that's really taking those opportunities, but also opportunities for an uppercut. Both guys in close, both guys starting to bend a little bit forward, especially Gonzalez from those body shots. They can cramp you up, they can make you lean a little bit. If I'm in a corner of both fighters, especially Kogamo, I'm telling them, look for that uppercut. Now, you're setting it up with those body shots. Kogamo's thrown a few uppercuts, none have connected the way he'd like, but it appears, like you said, Teddy, 
It's there, just not quite look, yet. Look, look at the way Gonzalez, to get away from those body shots, Todd, he leans forward a little bit from the waist. And a straight left there from Carcamo again connects. Carcamo's the boss right now. Round four in the books. Take a look here, talking about it earlier. Here's the proof of it. Gonzalez, look at that right hand behind the head. Pulls him forward, then hits him with that left uppercut. See, the referee wasn't there to see it. The referee's on the other side, doesn't see it. Gonzalez, a little sneaky there. Hey, that's a little dirty, that's experience. Taking advantage of things, but that is a foul that has to be caught by the ref. It could be dangerous. You pull a guy's head forward, the head can't recoil. You know, it's like a shock absorber. It can't give, and when it can't give, it absorbs the blunt of punches. We're in round five here of our opening semifinal, Boxino 2014, Carcamo, black trunks with a red trim, Gonzalez, black trunks, white trim. Oh, and they trade shots, a right from Carcamo and a right from Gonzalez. Carcamo, five years younger, you think that's helping right now? I'm gonna say yes. And Not maybe more importantly, we would help down the stretch. I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say you will serve him in confidence that he's gotten from that knockdown. Not to mention in our quarterfinals, Carcamo's fight was over in round two. Gonzalez had to go the complete full six rounds and it was a war with Miguel Mendoza. Very good point, we're talking about, you know, we've been using the comparisons, the analogies of the NCAA tournament. If a team has to go into overtime, double overtime, triple overtime, that team gets a little worn out going into their next game where another team can be fresher. Good point, Gargamo, younger, fresher. And only five week turnaround. Both these fighters said that was the quickest turnaround they've ever had. We'll see what happens in the later rounds here. We're in round five. The defining moment of this fight thus far was in round one when Carcamo connected with a left hook. Gonzalez took an eight count and continued on, but Carcamo for a few moments thought he'd won the fight. In fact, he jumped up on the top rope and started celebrating here in North Dakota. You know, you made a good point talking about both guys not using fight in five weeks apart. I think it hurts Gonzalez more. Only, you know, Carcamo's been active. Gonzalez, no. Only two fights in 2013, that was last year. And go back three fights, he was off one year and three months. So, really, he's not used to fighting as often. Cargomo, been active, hasn't had those gaps. It suits him much better getting right back in that ring. Again, not to mention five years younger. Down to the body again, Cargomo. I don't know where these uppercuts are, but for me, the uppercut is called for in here for both guys, especially for Cargomo. Now Gonzalez getting his body work in. And there's an uppercut. There it is. Yeah, it's there. It's there, Todd. Not with quite the vigor that Carcamo would have liked, but it didn't connect flush. And Gonzalez, by far, has eaten the tougher, heavier punches in this battle. So you just said it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with that. Tougher, heavier punches. You know, you could argue that Gonzalez is busier this round, but the harder punches, no doubt about it. Kakamo. The more telling punches, no doubt about it. Kakamo. Stop! Welcome back to Friday Night Fights, presented by Corona Extra. Still to come, our second semifinal, Chris Rudd and Peter Petroff. And Rudd wearing a Tennessee orange. He won't be happy to know that the Volunteers lost to Michigan by two points in today's Sweet 16 match. Uh, uh, what a shame. Uh, I have Michigan in my, in my tournament, <laughs> in my pool, in my brackets. I, I feel you filled bad. out 100 brackets. You got everybody in, a, in one of them. 73. Okay. Only 73. I was way off. Round six here, three rounds to go. They fight eight, and keep in mind, if it's a draw after eight rounds, we go to a draw breaker, ninth and final round. How much will fatigue be a factor at this point now, Teddy? You know, that's a great point. Physical fatigue, mental fatigue. You're not getting your way. You know, you're getting hurt to the body. You've been on the floor. Does mental fatigue show itself to Gonzalez? You're not the boss. You know, when you're pressing a guy and you're the boss and you're having your way, you could be going 100 miles an hour. You're not tired because you're driving. You know, you're having a good time. You're in charge. But when the other guy is the guy that's doing the damage, 
the other guys, the guys that's on you, whether you're working hard or not, you're fatigued because you're not in control. And a couple shots off the rope from Karkamo, but Gonzalez answers in kind. And keep this in mind, Teddy, Karkamo has had three eight-round fights in his career. He has 0-3 in those fights. You know, another great point you bring about fatigue. When you're in a tournament, unlike usually when you have big gaps, you're fighting every five weeks. The trainers have to know that they got to give the fighter, ready for this? They got to give them a break. They got to give them some time off. If they don't, they overtrain a fighter and you can leave it in the gym. Very easy. A lot of these trainers nowadays don't understand that. You're training for two, three months to get ready for that first fight. Guess what, Todd? That training doesn't disappear. It's still there. You got to give the guy a little time off before he goes into that next fight five weeks later. If you don't, if Gonzalez didn't take time off, that can show. Gonzalez. Because you don't have a lot in your tank going in. Gonzalez said he went home, took a day off, and jumped right back in the gym. And there's a right hand from Karkamo and a left. You know what? That can hurt you. Besides that hook that just hit him. That can hurt you only taking that day. It sounds great to the average guy out there. Hey, great. What a, what a work ethic. Right back in that gym. I'm saying right now, if that's true, that's hurting Gonzalez right now. Because that two, three months of training for the first fight, that was still there. He didn't get a chance for his body to recover, to recoup a little. He could be a little drained going into this fight. You can hear this crowd here at Newtown, North Dakota, oohing and on every time Karkamo lands a left hook. And he's landed plenty of them tonight. And there's a nice one-two from Gonzalez. Again. The more hurting punches, that would be Karkamo. So Karkamo, it appears, in control here through six rounds of our first Boxino semifinals. Two rounds to go between Fernando Carcamo and Miguel Gonzalez. This venue's been sold out for weeks here in Newtown as they got ready for Boxino. It hey, is a real sellout. I mean, the city population originally was 1,900 from what our great stats people tell us. It grew to 2,200, 2,249 to be exact. That's including us and all the staff that we have, all our ESPN buddies here. But we understand there's 2,200 people in here, so that means the whole city's here. That's a sellout. I mean, that... God, well, that's, hopefully no one's house is on fire. That, well, no yeah, fire, put it out. there's no firemen and... Banks, I don't know. Maybe we should go rob a bank on our way out of town. Where is Saul? Anyone see Saul? Big body shots galore here from Karkamo. And now working upstairs is Gonzalez leaning in again. And this is where Gonzalez got in big trouble in the first round, leaning back against the ropes. Listen, he can get himself out of trouble when you're throwing up a cut because every once in a while, Karkamo is in position right there for an uppercut. And Car Gonzalez needs. A big moment now on my scorecard, and I would hope on the scorecards officially here, he needs a big moment if I to big get moment, in this fight. You mean knockout? That's exactly what he may need. Well, at least a knockdown, maybe once or twice in a round, and then again the next round. But maybe all the way, big moment, as you said, the lights out. And here's Karkamo's found a second win here in round seven. Got a little more pep in his step. He's bouncing around now. And why? Shots. Why, Todd? Five years younger, that could be one explanation. And again, maybe he took time off after the last fight, rejuvenated himself the way that you need to. Maybe Gonzalez didn't. Gonzalez waving Karkamo in here on the ropes. Perhaps he's got a plan. I'd love to know what it is. The only thing that I haven't been seeing from both guys, and look, it hasn't hurt Cargamo, no jab. He's been allowed to walk right in, but it has hurt Gonzalez, the absence of a jab, because it has not kept Cargamo out. Only three jabs, in fact, connecting from Cargamo. He doesn't need it, though, because when a guy's not throwing a jab at you, and you're the biggest, stronger guy, and you having that front door left wide open, well, the lack of a jab isn't going to hurt you. You're allowed to walk in. See, that time you saw a jab from Gonzalez, what happened? Kept Cargamo out. Again, the lack of a jab has hurt Gonzalez more than it's hurt Cargamo. There's the jab from Gonzalez, keeping Cargamo out, but nothing behind it. 
Carcamo walking right through it. Yeah, because there's nothing behind it. And then, as you said, Gonzalez, no left hand behind it. Carcamo just walks right in. Oh, and a big, a big left shot. connecting by Gonzalez. In two weeks, we are headed west to fabulous Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay Casino. It'll be Gilberto Ramirez and Giovanni Lorenzo squaring off at 10 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. So here we go, the eighth and final round of our first semifinal here on Boxino 2014, the lightweight division. Teddy, what does Gonzalez need to do here? Land the left hand. That's his big punch, that's his power punch, that's the punch that he has confidence in. Just like that's the punch Cargamo has power in, the punch that Cargamo has confidence in. Gonzalez, Cargamo has shown that left hand tonight to get this lead. Gonzalez needs to show it now to pull this fight out of the fire. Gonzalez wishes round seven was about 15 seconds longer. He landed his best punch and punches of the night right before the bell rang. Here's Teddy's scorecard, 68-64. Gonzalez basically needs a knockout, according to the legend himself. As for you, scoring at home, five rounds to two for the Mexican fighter, Fernando Carcamo. Little distance is okay right now for Gonzalez. But then when Cargamo looks to close the distance, a left hand has to be fired off by Gonzalez. Catch Cargamo coming in, landed perfect, hurt him, and then follow up and finish him. That is the blueprint for Gonzalez to turn defeat into victory. He's only got a minute and 40 seconds to find that game plan to victory. As Carcaro again stalking Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah, I would have told him in the corner, look, there's no secrets now. You're behind, you need a knockout, Gonzalez. So I would have told him, the one you're going to do with is the left hand. And I would have reminded you want to give him a little faith, a little belief, a little bit of confidence that he can do it. So I'd remind him, listen, Carcaro has been knocked out before. He's been on the floor in two different fights. You can do it. But you can't do it if your hands are in your pocket. And right now, Gonzalez's hands in his pockets. And to Carcamo's credit, he could have stayed away from Gonzalez in this eighth and final round, trying to dance around him, but instead, true to his Yaki Warrior nickname, going straight at Gonzalez again. You know, in football, you see all the time, you see the prevent defense, but a lot of times it prevents guys from winning. Because then the other team moves right down the field and goes in the end zone. Why? Because there was no resistance. Why not keep doing what you were doing? Be tight with your defense, be smart, don't get me wrong. But keep pressing the guy if it was working for you. Keep him defensive-minded if it was working for you. You all of a sudden put your hands in your pocket like we are talking about Gonzalez does. If you do that, if you're comfortable, all of a sudden Gonzalez gets aggressive. And maybe he gets an opportunity he didn't have when you were pressing him. Carcamo going with offense is the best defense strategy here in round eight, and it has paid dividends. Ten seconds to go in our eighth and final round. Let's see if Gonzalez has a miracle in it. There you have it. Our first semifinal in the book. Did Fernando Carcamo do it up? It seems to be a resounding yes. But you never know. We'll find out next to see which one of these two fighters advances to our championship. Welcome back. Our first semifinal in the book, Fernando Carcamo and Miguel Gonzalez. Round one, Carcamo with an exorcism-like left hand. Yeah, you don't pull back from left hooks because they're long, and they usually catch you when you pull back. And then from that point on, well, Carcamo, the stronger guy, goes downstairs to the basement. We always talk about putting water in the basement. Well, he flooded the basement of Gonzalez all but night long. Let's take a look at Teddy's scorecard. No doubt about this one, 78-73 for Fernando, the Yaki Warrior Carcamo. For those of you scoring on our Friday Night Fights Facebook page, six rounds to two. What did the judges here in Newtown, North Dakota have to say? Let's send it up to Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge Daco Pudwell scores the contest. 76-76, a draw. Overruled 
by Judge Fred Fox, who scores the contest 78-74, and Judge Mark Fox, who scores the contest 77-75 for your winner by majority decision. And moving on to the finals of the Boxino 2014 Lightweight Tournament, Fernando El Guerrero Yaqui. Somebody grab that judge that had him in the draw and really suspend his license. Suspend his license. Bring him into the office and find out what on earth was going on in his mind when he was watching the fight. Because he was watching a different fight than we were. Let's send it now to Bernardo Asuna in the ring who's standing by with our winner. Yeah. Fernando, round one. You had that knockdown and you went up on the rope celebrating. How did that affect you? No, you know, that, that, that kind of disconcerted me. But it was because the referee stopped, told me, stop, stop, stop. You know, when you stop the fight, it's not like eight count. He told me stop because he was already, he was on his, his feet. He wasn't on the floor. I was punching him. So he told me stop. I said, that's it, I won. I got into the ropes and then I saw him counting. Come on. But you know, uh, we followed the strategy. That's it. You talked about breaking him down, and you did that pretty much for six rounds, and you never stopped going after him. What happened at the end of round seven and round eight where he was able to catch you? Yeah, he was able to catch me, but we never felt his punches that much. We knew he wasn't able to, to stop us, uh, to stop me. He didn't. We did a great job, you know? We had a great conditioning. We did a great job. I want to thank my manager for giving me this opportunity, Roberto Vargas and Rafa Soto, my team, Team Diaz. Antonio and Joel, my, my conditioning coach and my nutritionist, Amit Katz and Sabas Rosas. You know, Thank this you is, we're going to the finals, we're going to win this. You've got seven weeks off to the finals, and eight, eight, you are eight. the first finalist, May 23rd. Don't miss it. We're back to Todd and Teddy. Like I said, you never know. One judge scoring that fight, a draw, but Karkamo advances to the final. Coming up, our other semifinal, Peter Petrov and Chris Rudd. That's still to come later tonight, but for now, we go back to Bristol and Doug Kazarian.